Hey everybody, it's the Mad Master here doing a quick video about, uh, it's kind of a positive video for a change. So I have uh, committed myself to uh, enjoying this uh, newfound freedom we have in this town and this state. And I'm very happy to say that the last couple of weeks I've been going out a lot. Um, not every night. And there's a lot of things I hate about my job recently as I did in one of my previous videos, but just gonna say that I'm pretty happy. I went today to one of my favorite bars that I haven't been to since about probably, uh, maybe 2019, probably 2020. I think I went with my former roommate once in like February-ish, March 2020. And I was just like, Man, I'm sitting in here, not wearing a stupid fucking mask. Sorry for people that are pro mask, it's nothing to do with that. It's just, it's annoying to wear one. Um, there are still people wearing masks. It's just very, they're kind of a minority now <laughs> that go in to places and stuff. Um, I drink a beer, my favorite beer of all time, probably today. And then last night I met up with a friend at another bar I'm just like, damn, this is, this freedom is like, <laughs> it's pretty awesome, you know? Um, you know, when we were locked down and stuff, it just was, and even on a limited capacity, I, I didn't want to go out when, when we were locked down at all. Like, I know there was a couple, there was this one restaurant down the block from my house that I did go to a lot outside with, uh, my friend and possibly future business partner hopefully if things work out with what we're doing um and you know we would go out it would it was outside seating so we just did that a lot of the time that was like last summer and then the fall happened um went to a restaurant in rockford illinois with my uh, one of a date that i had and it was the only open restaurant in it was one of the only open restaurants in rockford because fitzer closed them all down so it was hilarious you know, we were in masks and then we sat down and took off our masks. And it was just hilarious, really surreal driving down there in the middle of this whole thing. And it was spooky. You know, I had, I actually was listening to Back in Black by ACDC on the way down. And I always consider that like a night album to listen to. Driving down there and the tollways were closed, but you can just go through. It was dead. It was like a fucking dystopian, like like lands not a dystopia but you know it was just kind of a it was creepy being all one of the only cars on the road in the middle of like it was november i think it was like november 1st of last year of 2020 so that was kind of my experience going to restaurants the last year and then a couple months back i went to a restaurant and then i've been going to bars and restaurants and stuff since uh things reopened and I'm pretty happy that I can do that. I'm pretty happy that I can actually get up and do things now. Um, having a blast, I'm just like, it's a little bittersweet because of all the crap, you know, over the last year and a half, but it's it's cool uh, to be able to go out and to go at places without having to step in some stupid circle or follow arrows or wear a fucking mask, like going to the gym been going to the gym for several weeks too and i've been doing my uh trx exercises that i was taught last year kind of late summer i started going to the gym again last summer uh but it really was a hassle and a pain in the ass wearing that mask at the gym so now that there's no mask mandate i can just fucking go and do the stuff so hopefully that'll help with a lot of things too but for some reason, uh, we can't go back to the office. So, uh, fuck you, you know. But, yeah, it's uh, it's cool to have some freedom again to do whatever we want. And hopefully it lasts this time. I don't know. You never know, of course. But it feels, it seems like whatever the hell happened and whatever the hell they were doing or are doing or what, well, just, you know, from the basic normie perspective, what happened to... Um, it seems like it's on its last legs in America as far as this crisis goes because, and I don't think, like I've been reading articles like, 
could America lock down again? No way. You know, like people are, it's just like these, there's no like, I guess it's like they're, they're almost like stirring up these like patriotic, like individualist, uh, uh, kind of, uh, talking points in some of these articles. I think one of them was like Huffington, not Huffington Post, but, uh, Daily Beast had an article like that. I don't like reading these normie establishment articles, but it was pretty funny them talking about this stuff. Like, we could never lock down again, blah, blah, blah. Americans wouldn't stand for it. And, you know, it's like, I'm happy, you know? Happy they opened up everything. And it's pretty relaxed. You know, you go out and you're, uh, there's no, uh, no rules. You know, I mean, a lot of places, like the place I was just at, there was nothing showing up and there was no door there's nothing on the door about masks or distancing or even you know what as far as the v word um not that i have to you know not that i have to worry about that you know as i might do a video explaining what my situation was with that and why i went along that path which i know is controversial to some people many people well, I'm I'm a little fat, so I'm not gonna. I don't know. There's that's there's that too. You know, I am losing weight, but you know that's a big risk factor. And I just felt like, you know, I'm talking about it. Shit, I just I just want to I want to move beyond all this shit. And I can still criticize things that I can, and I still won't go along with certain things if they happen uh, to be reintroduced. Um, especially if they are re reintroduced, which I don't think they will be because I feel like people just don't have the taste for it anymore, you know? And, I mean, we could become a country where there are crises like, crises like this, but I don't think that we'll be back to where we were last year. I don't think it'll ever be that bad as far as the laws and the mandates. I just don't think so. And even maybe the thing itself it might not even be that bad ever again hopefully but it was you know it was surreal going out with my friend last night i hadn't seen him he was one of the people that avoided i mean i don't think he avoided people 100 percent, but he avoided people a little bit and it was cool catching up i never avoided people really uh as i've said before you know even he was telling me that he went to visit his family in the middle of the whole thing no masks or anything I'm like okay well a lot of people broke their own rules i don't think he was a strict uh person about it though i don't think he was super strict about it i should say he just kind of followed some of the stuff and i didn't follow anything but the uh mask mandates at stores and stuff you know but it's not like i threw a huge party you know with a super you know at, at my house or something every every night or something like that it's not like it was a i don't think it's a big deal not being an extremist about something jesus christ so yeah at this point in my life i'm just very happy that i'm able to go out and i'm able to just walk around you know and just there's freedom you know you don't have the urgency of like oh my god well what if someone what if someone knew that i was hanging out with someone today or you know thousand dollar fine because they don't live with me or whatever i I don't think it was really nobody really i think those rules were bent and broken all the time honestly like everybody i know pretty much broken in one time or another in some way so that's why these extremists that are out there are so just so ridiculous most people did actually violate the guidelines one time or another I, and i'm not saying like everybody there there's people that are still in their homes now i'm sure there's people wearing masks in their car you know i see that around sometimes or on their bike it's like okay and they're probably hiding in their home some people still you know not getting a job you know on unemployment or whatever or working remotely but it's i'm happy i've been i'm going to a show next week it's like gothic horror punk band and I'm just like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm so excited, you know, I'm probably going to be going to open my comedy too again, probably going to be doing that, um, probably I need to get my printer fixed or set up actually, not fixed, but, and, you know, I'm going to be printing out my comedy stuff, writing some new stuff, 
Will I talk about politics in my comedy? Well, you bet. But I'm going to try to see how I can incorporate that in a, in a way that's good. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to worry about it as far as what I talk about. I'm not going to censor myself. But a lot of stuff I talk about in these videos, you know, it's not like they're that funny. But, like, it has to be done in a way that's funny in a comedy, comedic uh, context as far as doing open mics and stuff. Yeah, I'm just I'm restarting everything that I started in March of 2020. In essence, that's how I feel. It's like a restart. It's a great reset. Oh my god! Ah. No, I mean it is a reset. It is. It is. I'm not gonna say it's a great reset, you know, and all that shit. Like, but for me in my life, it's a reset, you know. And I've lost some friends sort of over this you know, a little bit, you know. We had a falling out few people uh because i had a different opinion about things that were going on and they just were mad and there was other grievances too though that probably contributed to that uh, i had a lot of arguments with people over the months you know i basically became a became a republican for a while in a way and you know i'm kind of more in the center about the whole virus thing now obviously i mean i can't really i'd be a hypocrite if i said that i was like super radical about it anymore but I'm not, definitely not on the side of people that want to lock things down forever, or, you know, all that shit. But it's, uh, it's a difficult position to be in, you know, as far as stuck in the middle with you, you know, and that's where I kind of went. I went all over the place because that's how, the way my mind works, you know, so. But I'm happy that things are open. Um, I'm probably going to go out a lot more and live my life that I was supposed to live, you know, because last year, early last year, I got dumped and I had some other stuff happen to me that was fucking awful. And I was really down, like worse than I've ever been, honestly. And it, it's not because of the particular girl or anything like that. It's just, it was just this compounding of everything that happened at that point in time. And that it just did felt like things were crashing down in life in the world and that was the, I was on the verge you know I was on the edge I was on the edge of the cliff so to be able to uh, reclaim the impetus to do things in life is very important to me at this point I can say I will uh, be doing things so much um just so many things that i want to do there's so many projects i have already that i it's a scatter you know i'm scattered all over the place but it's like just being able to go to my favorite bars and have a beer at this point i have so much gratitude that we were able to open things up again without some authoritarian you see the thing is, my whole thing with the whole crisis is that I was really worried about the elites and the powers that be using this to really clamp down more than they did, more than they were doing, at least in the United States. And I probably got into some thought patterns and some ideas that were a little bit extreme for some people. I, I felt like it was necessary though at the time to go that route and it doesn't mean that i necessarily agree with all these people these radical people that were because i still see people on facebook you know like uh post about this stuff all the time jenny Yunus, Eunice and alex barons and all these people and i still agree with them on most of the stuff but it's it's like i want to move on from this stuff that's the thing i want to move on from this whole thing and do other things and think about others talk about other things and think about other things so i feel like since it's not going the way that i expected it to i did not expect it to be this good at this point you know and maybe that's just my lack of critic you know lack of critical thinking as far as conspiracy culture or you know maybe that's my lack of like perspective or my I'm jaded against a lot of things 
I didn't, especially where I live. Like, where I live is the most liberal place in the Midwest, period. It's probably the most liberal town in the Midwest. You could probably look it up and say, and say, oh, that's where Matt lives. Of course, in my previous videos, I mentioned the name. And the fact that we were able to open up this quick, this soon, without some, like, ridiculous... Uh, I mean, we're, we've been lucky, you know, as far as the whole the whole situation goes because the numbers were never that bad here it was never and like i said in my environmental videos like i don't know if it's the environment and i don't know if it's just like the way population density is in this area or what it is but it, it was never that bad here and we didn't do the most extreme stuff like some of the some of the stuff in canada or australia, australia or even california there was a lot worse stuff, it seems like, for guidelines. Pretty pretty bad, pretty bad guidelines. Like I said, the November one was the worst. That was my most hated one. The whole, you know, anybody outside your household you have to pay a thousand dollar fine if you're caught with someone else in your household. Right in Christmas too, nonetheless. Um, I think it was late November. And other than that, I don't think things were that terrible as far as the guidelines other than closing down for a whole month in may but like they weren't as i should say in comparison they weren't as terrible they're not i mean i don't i don't agree with a lot of this stuff but i'm just saying like I, they weren't as bad as some places and at this point we are completely open they broke i mean they tore down the testing center this big testing center we had they tore down the shot center i'll just say shot center they tore, you know, they're they're doing like they're we're basically back to normal. There was one burrito place I tried to go to yesterday. They still have a sign that says no no customers inside because of you know what, and it made me really mad actually. So it's like there's once in a while you'll bump into these things like these businesses or these restaurants or bars that'll be all up their own ass about it still, but it looks stupid and foolish, especially in light of other other businesses and other uh, establishments being fully open with not even a sign like not even no ma like not even masks recommended sign like nothing like at the bar I just went to like there's nothing there it's a microbrew I went to actually no sign other than like we're closed on July 4th <laughs> that was the only sign <laughs> that I saw on there pretty much and it's a great moment you know it's a great moment in the in my life this milestone that we've i we've i've gotten over this whole fucking thing over this last year i was on the la i was on the edge as you probably can tell from my previous videos on here i was on the edge i was i was ready to you know in some ways i was ready to join the uh people on january 6th in some ways like i was just it was just it, it had gotten so bad like in, in just how i felt about everything that was going on um it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that I'm that extreme or that I'm that crazy or right wing or something like that. I, I don't really feel like I am, but if it would have continued, like, let's say now with the criteria that they have for all the, you know, all the numbers and all the statistics, right? If it would have, if that would have been, the threshold would have been a lot lower as far as closing down or a lot of these things, or if they would have lowered the threshold then yes, I would have felt like we were in some kind of authoritarian uh, 1984 type of situation um, if that would have happened, which it didn't. And I'm not saying that there weren't elements of that already, but we didn't do that. Things are open. You know, I can go to a record store without having to wear gloves. I mean, there was, there was these record stores that had, you have to wear gloves. It's like that. And then the service transmission thing came out and it's like, are you sure, guys, that you have to wear gloves at a fucking record store, you know? And then all these weird precautions and stuff, like weird conflicting things, right? Like at restaurants, like you take off your mask and sitting down, which the air spreads, you know? It's like, it's so stupid. So, but you have to, like, wear a mask standing up. It's like, does the air just, is it like a, is like the air, it's like a, it's like Super Mario Brothers where it's super mario brothers 64 except for in the reverse you know where the level where you have that poisonous fog on the bottom you get to higher level but it's like the opposite the poisonous fog is up so you're sitting down the poisonous fog's down 
I don't know, kind of ridiculous, but yeah. So it's it's been a uh, it's been quite a journey to where we are now, which I feel like it's it's so much better that I I just I'm astounded that it's so good. I'm I'm surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised by what's going on. I did not expect it to be this good. Like I did not expect it to be this open at this point. I thought a lot of the alarmist predictions, you know, this could take two years. Yeah, you know, you know who I'm being right now, right? By the way, of course, Mister, uh, you know who? Uh, it could take. Uh, it could be the end of 2021, 2022. Uh, uh. You know, people were saying that kind of stuff. You know, that before we reopened or felt like back to normal. Now I know there's some things that won't go back to normal, like my job, because there's places that are doing that now. Because oh, we can make more money by having people stay at home, uh, you know. But um, as far as like everything else, bar, you know, bartenders, you know, looking at me and you know, like no masks, you know. There's a there's a tension, you know, sexual tension with you know being at a bar with women and stuff, and like you know, it's like it's just better, you know. And I'm not gonna let it go. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going with this. Like this is this freedom. I mean, a year and a half of being locked down is for me. It's like a rubber band. It's like a you pull it back, and it, it's like it's equal to five years of just like trying to live life as hard as possible. Honestly, like I've never been into drugs or a super hardcore drinker and I'm not going to I'm not going to go that route but as far as like not going not being able to go out or going out in limited capacity for a year and a half to me equals 5 years of from now from now you know until 5 years from now going out all the time several times a week or whatever that's how bad it got it's like if you lose a let's say like a there's this favorite video game that you had, uh, you know, you have like this video game cartridge growing up or something, or C, you know, CD or DVD or whatever, and you lose it, and it's like rare, and you don't play it that often, but you play it enough, but you lose it, and you're like, oh my god, I, I, it's like when you get it back, if you finally get it back, you play it for like 10 hours, you know, it's like, oh my god, I missed that so much, so I'm gonna fucking it'll be overkill because i'm gonna be doing so much stuff but yeah it's it's been it's been horrible in even even in this state and i don't know what's gonna happen in the fall or winter i don't i i have no idea what they're gonna do um at the rate we're going it seems like as far as the science goes as far as what i've looked into <laughs> these things don't last more than two years, three tops or year and a half. Sometimes, you know, year, year and a half to two year, and a, a year to three, one to three years. Right. Because people have the I M I double M word naturally or by something, some other means. So no, I mean, if, we're gonna, if we get, if there's a flu thing, we're going to, we're going to do another mandate. I don't know. I don't think so. Now, I will say I will say that probably people will be wearing more of those fucking things in the fall. I would say the mask thing, but I don't think there'll be a mandate necessarily, you know. This whole thing's done. I mean, for for all intents and purposes, I think it's done. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. There could be something down the line. I mean, the conspiracy people are talking about something else now entirely, if you know what I mean. Like as far as uh uh something cyber related now they're talking about so like it's like this whole thing if you want to believe in what whatever with all that stuff you know it's um a lot of stuff didn't come true didn't come to pass that people predicted that on the on the you know on the right wing conspiracy side and also the the left impending doom quote unquote side didn't come to pass either but it's better than either one. Things are fucking open. I can go to a restaurant, but you know, I can meet up with people without worrying about being fined. I can go to a bar, go on a date. 
go to a fucking movie. I don't know what the movies are like. I think the movies probably might be a little more strict still. I have a feeling, you know, I have a feeling that they, they're a little more strict there, but I'm not sure. I haven't been to a movie in, actually, I haven't been to a movie theater since The Lighthouse with my ex-girlfriend. And that was the last movie I think I saw in the theater, honestly. Um, you know, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a hard run, you know, in this whole thing, but I'm glad that it's the end of the road. I, I truly will try to manifest this belief that it's the end of the road of this and we can move the fuck on from all this stuff. And, you know, like I said, I realized I, I went to the extremes because it was a protective measure because I really was scared about because of 9-11 and a lot of stuff that they that came about because of that and a lot of the things that happened. So many things remind me with the with the rhetoric, at least. At least on the surface, the rhetoric reminded me of 9-11 and the Iraq stuff. So that is why I got so extreme because I was afraid, and I still think there's something, there's stuff with this that is weird we'll find out. We're already finding out about more weird stuff and I don't think that's gonna stop. Just like with these other crises, you know? There's a, a good book called Disconnecting the Dots that came out several years back. Uh, you know, there's there's various books about these previous crises, crises that we've been through as a country the last 20 or 30 years, you know? 20 or no, 20 or 50 years so it's not just you know it's not it's not gone away like it's not it's not like this is the end of the end of the line like nobody will remember corona after this video or you know after this year or whatever you know it's not like it's completely over but for all intents and purposes for me i feel like i can look outside you know, and some of this might be kind of Matt, uh, what's his name, uh, Matt McKinley kind of stuff, because he did a very good video I recommend in April of last year where he predicted a lot of what, what, what happened, and it sort of did. It's really weird, and some of the quantum of conscience stuff, which is, he's a more conspiracy slash new age kind of guy. Um, and some of the stuff is kind of freaky that he talked talks about. It's kind of a Philip K. Dick kind of multi, like multi-dimensional kind of, but done in a very intelligent way I'm just going to say that I actually own his book too which I haven't read yet but a very interesting guy you know if you watch you have to kind of dig deep into his whole philosophy and stuff to really understand some of the stuff he's saying but it's good stuff so and some of his stuff may be true maybe you know but one of the things he said you know this guy's an ardent conspiracy guy right one of the things he said is that no they're going to they're not going to pull you know this stuff maybe you know like the bad stuff we were talking about it may be decades down the line or maybe you know five ten years down the line we're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have you know things are gonna be back to normal pretty much for I, and I'm not saying that even anything he says is is legitimate or true by the way but I, I can sort of see his point of view like anything worse happening like whether you believe it's natural or, you know, made made up, it they applies both because I think it's just like this these there's these archetypes and these uh, reoccurring themes in the world in life. And it's not even a matter of like some conspiracy. It's just the way that things evolve and uh, go forward. So I don't think we're gonna have anything like any kind of crisis for any kind of crisis that you know the elites could use for, you know, gaining more power. I mean, we might, we might, I'm not saying that, but like, I agree with him how he says, like, this is it, you know, I think, I mean, I think as he said, this is going to be, I mean, for a while. And then, you know, eventually maybe we will be whatever, you know, as far as I'll use some code words, just like he does the tortilla chips in our hands. You know, if you know what I mean, the the beast. You know, I'm, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a Christian, but I'm just saying, like, I fuck like a beast. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't, I don't think that's going to be for a while. That's what I'm trying to say. Like anything, anything you want to say is really bad. Like a cri another crisis like this, ten, twenty years, maybe, maybe less, maybe, maybe next week. Who knows? I'm not saying that, but it's more likely to be decades of 
you know, we're moving on beyond this and stuff. And, you know, there was a lot of weird reoccurring, like, archetypal patterns with um, this whole crisis, too, that you have to think about, like, the 1918 thing is so weird because, like, there was that movie 1917 that came out in 2019. Um, I had some really weird stuff happen in January of 2020 before this whole thing started. Like, I had this really weird experience because, like, I said I was sick for, like, two weeks or something, and I was in bed watching Johnny Got His Gun. Another video or another movie that took place in the, you know, late teens of the 20th century, which uh, is when the uh, other the thing this was compared to happened. Of course, the numbers are not nearly as much and they might compare to other things that happened later too, after the 1918 thing. But it was it was weird how there was a lot of stuff, there was a lot of focus on like that, th those like late teens, early 20s, like even with media and like, I'm not saying this is like a conspiracy, but it's like more like Carl Jun, Carl, like Union kind of uh, like things in our unconscious mind or something is what I mean so like uh, that's what happened it was just like I was sitting in bed sick and I was watching Johnny got his gun and I was like oh my god I feel like shit it's like oh what is this this is a weird world to be in you know it's like and then all the stuff hit it was weird I know that's about World War One more than Spanish flu but it's still it's still kind of interesting to think about that whole thing that happened with all that and there was just these themes that were coming about you know I mean, there's probably songs that were hits that you can look at, you know, back in early 2020, like, whoa, that's weird, you know, it's a weird coincidences and synchronicities is what I mean. So, and yeah, that only happens every hundred years, these uh, pandemics, you know, they, uh, I'm just going to say the words, I don't care. Um, I do try to censor myself a little for YouTube, but um, these pandemics only happen about every every hundred years, the, the big ones, and this at least the belief it, it 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 depends on what you believe I, and this was not i mean this may not even be the big one of course because of the percentage of people and it affect infected and stuff it's not even close to being the big one or it could be and maybe there would you know it's more what about what people believe so people believed this was the big one so even if there is a one that might be somewhat, you know, the same or a little bit bigger, the reaction may be quite different in the future to the whole thing. So this is like, this crisis is like the fulfillment of that hundred year cycle. Uh, maybe it's, the, maybe it's an occult thing. I don't know. I'm just saying like, like they, they, it's more about what people believe rather than necessarily what it really was. And they believe it was like the new, 1918 early 20, 21st century early 20th century early 21st century you know uh probably some political stuff was similar back then and just you know you had you know, a lot of weird you know there's just a lot of there are some synchronicities and some coincidences of course so since that happened the unconscious in the collective unconscious or whatever that's why that's kind of what's making me believe that we're this is over because even if you look at the, if you look at the 1918 thing, America was ahead before some of the other countries were too. So it's like, it's playing out exactly like, and it, you know, like Matt McKinley says, who knows what this is all, what, if it's something conscious or not, they're doing these, uh, these cycles that they want to, uh, go into and stuff and whatever, but it's interesting. And I, this has gone totally off the deep end this video but I don't care it's really interesting to me but I'm not going to edit this video either with my uh my program that I just downloaded because I'm just like it's just it's taken too long to uh it takes a long time for half an hour videos to be edited like that on my my phone but that doesn't mean that I usually don't I'm just not going to do it this time but uh it's just uh because I just have so many, so much things. That's because I have so many things that I'm doing right now as far as uh, videos and stuff. So I just don't feel like editing this one because it's already going in 35 minutes. So, but to conclude, uh, I am very happy at what's going on 
in the world, in America, in the United States, in my state, which is Wisconsin. Uh, finally free, like that Dream Theater. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, actually, that's a good album. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm happy that things are open. I'm happy that I'm able to just go down the street without worrying about someone jumping out of the way. It's over, you know, it's a celebration. Um, and just to, as a final note, I'm not gonna apologize about freaking out and going so hardcore, but I just add, you know, as far as this whole crisis goes and how off the deep end I went in a lot of my videos and or some of the crazy things I said, that said, I am sorry that I would only be sorry if it was for the wrong reason, but my reasons were simple. I, I compared it to previous things and I saw some patterns and I wanted to protect things from happening that, that could have been worse. There's not, there weren't, weren't a lot of voices for critics or skeptics through the months. There were, now we are able to say a lot more stuff about this whole thing without being yelled at or called names or banned or censored but back in i mean there's still stuff that's being censored i'm not saying that but back last year you know if you question anything so i was i was standing up for the voiceless or the the suppressed voices and i was trying to go against the powers that be that i thought there was a potential of them using this as a pretext for other bad things just like every every power structure in the whole history of humanity has used crises to implement more, you know, try to uh, gain more power and stuff. So it was a protective measure. I feel like my videos are necessary. I feel like my protests, my uh, Twitter stuff, you know, I even corresponded with someone that's a pretty high profile skeptic on Twitter, which is interesting. Um, I'm not going to say who it is, just to keep an anonymity. Um, she's a pretty high profile skeptic, not some kind of anti VA, you know, the V word, I'm not saying that, even though she has questions about this, this one, but she's not like from that community is what I'm saying. So it, it I mean, I was, I was going hardcore, you know, I was, uh, reading all sorts of books. I read, bought all of Alex Berenson's booklets. I bought, uh, certain other people's books and, uh, you know, the one, the famous, the infamous documentary, you know, oh, well, there's a Carl Vernon thing, by the way, it's, it's just capped up, I'm gonna watch it, um, but yeah, I went far, and I feel like it was necessary, I don't, I don't make any apologies, really, other than people may have misunderstood me at times, and I'm sorry, and, and maybe I didn't, like, I didn't want to be the most extreme person in either way, in either direction, you know, but I had to take a stand to some extent because I felt like we had to try to uh, push back on some of the stuff that may have been going on. I wasn't certain. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust the government or corporations, you know, and I still don't. So I don't feel like uh, my actions were unwarranted. I, I really don't. And but I do, I am sorry for people that do, did lose people. I am sorry about people that, you know, lost a lot in this whole thing. I do feel bad. And I, I am sorry for seeming, if I did seem insensitive in any of my videos or in my, any of my messaging, I am sorry about that. I feel bad about that. I didn't want to seem that way. I was just pushing back against a lifetime of research of you know elites and power structures that I thought oh there's my, there's something here there's some there's some smoke here and I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this so I'm I'm gonna be you know trying to push for open discussion and debate uh, as far as stuff goes looking at statistics that were contradictory at times and and so forth so that's the way or things that or rules that were changed for example you know like with versus from, which uh, is still something I'm going to research even now. And yeah, you can say I'm a hypocrite for taking the shot too. And now that I, you know, uh, I, that I did, but I can come from a position and said, oh, I, I took the shot. But it, I, I see it like 
yeah, it's, it's hypocritical, hypocritical, but it's like I can even convince people if there is something going on, which I will, I will be researching stuff. If there's, if there's more going on than I know, like with regards to some of that research that I haven't done, then I could tell people, and I'm not going to do it for a while. I, I'm not really concerned. I'd rather move on with life. As a matter of fact, you know, 50, 50, if I'm even going to do anything more about this whole thing, cause I just want to move on with life and have fun. That's what I want. Life for me is about comfort, fun, and creativity. Those are the three things. So I'm not even sure that I'm going to do that. But I did I did do what I had to do with regards to certain situations that I'm in. Um, and I don't feel bad about seemingly contradictory things that I did because I don't, I am not that extreme. I'm not as extreme as uh, some of the people, but I'm not the, in the other extreme either. I want to, but I want the truth. That's what I want. You know, I want to know the truth about things. And that's, that's the way it is. I'm, even if I'm a hypocrite, at least I'm searching for the truth. You know, even if you see me as a hypocrite for all this. Um, and, you know, I took the controlled opposition one anyways, you know, the starting with the J. <laughs> The control, I call it the controlled opposition one, um, which is hilarious. But yeah, I want to move on with life. That's why I did it. I just didn't want to think about it anymore. I just go out there and do it. And yeah, it's to fit in, peer pressure, whatever. Mostly pressure from my job because it's like, I thought we were going back to the office and in full capacity and I didn't want to fucking suffocate all day. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be your guinea pig, right? And I was, and I am. And so far there's been nothing my skin's peeling off but that's because of bad sunburn weeks back but I, you know that's the only thing i've noticed that's different is that's just because of the sunburn that i had but i haven't had any any issues i'm just saying so and but at the same time if someone says there are i i will i i'm not going to want to censor them i want to hear it i want to hear about it so i've done other videos about this too so like my on my bitchy channel I may do some more about this subject, too, because I, I think people have to chill the fuck out on both sides. I mean, there's going to be, you know, there's there's things that happen regardless of what you what people think, think about these things. So to conclude, I'm gonna get, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, um, I'm excited. I'm going to keep going with things. I hope my year didn't start until June 2nd when op things opened up period that's when things that's when things when things opened up in this town that's when my year started so this is the year of the fucking fire breathing dragon beast that's going to uh extinguish all the past bullshit all the stuff and i will do that mark my fucking words that's all